Good afternoon, everybody. Today is 2-16-2019, 12.09 p.m. This is Rescue Boss. Um, just my normal disclaimer, this video is for information purposes only. This is not a substitute for anything else. Um, just wanted to go over some uh, medical thoughts and opinions. And the kicker is um, during... An SHTF, or the medical system would fail, or the medical system goes down, what are we going to do? Um, no hospitals, uh, no 911, no EMS, um, maybe no doctors. Um, what are you going to do? Or if there is any, how much are you going to pay for their services? So I started thinking about that, and one of the things um, that I found a while ago, and it's not 100% my thought, but I know about them, is a uh, medical shelter. Um, can you build one yourself? Uh, and that is a possibility. Um, do you have the supplies to do it? Would you build one for your community? And that's all tough questions. Because during a disaster, that's going to be a necessity. Every disaster I've been to, um, Sandy in New Jersey, um, we have medical shelters, housing shelters established. Within that shelter was also a medical facility, a uh, first aid area. Because normally when you're dealing with a large amount of people, you get people with, with sickness and injuries. Um, during Sandy, some of the stuff we ran into were uh, elderly people uh, hiding in their houses that were unfit to be lived in. That was one of our biggest issues we had where we actually went to the residence with police an EMS and physically had to remove the people from the house because of the conditions. And this was in uh, New Jersey up in the Union Beach area. Um, that section of New Jersey during uh, Sandy was under, uh, parts of it was under 15 feet of uh, flood wall when it was hit. Um, I think it was over 70% over of the town was damaged and or destroyed by the flood waters. So I tell people, what are you going to do? Um, so that's the thing you got to think about. Um, because you're not going to be able to acquire certain things. Um, you know, think about the common diseases you may deal with during a disaster. Are you going to have the, the food you need to stay healthy? Um, remember, depending on what you're eating, it's going to affect uh, how you operate. You know, remember, if you don't have power, your food in the refrigerator is going to go bad, typically in under 72 hours, depending on the temperature. Um, your stuff in the freezer is going to go bad. You know, so what are you going to do with it? Do you let it go bad or, you know, you know what? Maybe I'll cook it. At least maybe I'll get a little longer use out of it. Or, you know what? If I'm in a neighborhood and it's going to go bad, Instead of letting it go bad, maybe have like a block party event and have everybody come together and eat. At least you're serving the community and, and other people depending on the event and the size of the event. You know, because if you work together, it's better than being on your own sometimes. So, remember that food lack of and different uh, than you're used to is going to affect you. The quality and quantity of the food is going to affect you. Uh, remember, if you don't have good stuff, that's when sickness starts. How about infections from cuts, abrasions? Are you going to have a way to treat them? Do you have your tetanus shots before this occurred? Uh, just things to think about. Uh, how about medications? Antibiotics are going to be key, but I'll tell you what, 
any type of medication is going to be out there. It's going to be available, but it's going to be pricey on a black market situation. Uh, natural remedies probably will become key. But is it truly a natural remedy or is it somebody selling something that's not? Same way with meds. They tell you it's so-and-so product, but is it really? You don't know what it is. You don't have a way to look it up. How do you know what you're buying? Um, so acquiring supplies are going to be key. And then, you know, think about the, the medical illness side. People that aren't on their meds, how that's going to affect them. Um, the stress, the stuff they see, um, death and dying are all going to affect their me mental condition, which can also affect their health. So you want to be prepared for that. So I thought about it and I thought, man, you know, if you had to make a shelter or a first aid system, and I'm not going to get into everything that would be in it, but some of the things you would need to look at would be the highest thing if you built a medical facility during a disaster or SHTF would be security. Because you're going to have people maybe trying to break in to get stuff. You know, so that's going to be, be key along with personal protective equipment for the people working in there, gloves, gowns, eye protection. Um, having that available will be key also. How about comms, a way to communicate, having radios, or if you don't have that, a bullhorn, a way to get people to listen to you, are going to be key. The next thing you got to think about is site selection. Where are you going to put it? Is it going to be in a tent, you know, a 10 by 20 tent that you can set up? It's going to be in a building, a garage, a house, whatever, but you got to make sure you have room for it. You know, um, is it uphill from waterways? You know, because you don't want to be flooded if you have a medical facility. How about power for lighting? You know, generators run those lights. Um, remember, if, depending on the environment, having fans to move air, air around is going to be key also. Because if you can't move air and you're in a tent, it's going to get crazy hot in that tent. And also with good air, um, with fans, it'll have good air exchange, which is going to be key to help prevent some, some of the infection stuff. Sanitation. Um, one in ten water and bleach. Do you have extra bleach to do that? Um, how about restrooms, bathroom facilities? How are you going to clean them? That's one of the biggest areas. If you've watched any uh, other programs with Prepper X, he talks about how he prevents a lot of his illnesses. You know, don't touch the bathroom doors. Uh, hand sanitizers, supplies to clean the bathroom. And how about hot water? How do you how are you going to get hot water? Are you going to be able to boil it so that you have it? Um, how about a separation area for infection? Like with the flus, some of the hospitals up here put tents up. If you have the flu, that's where they send you. They won't lay in the hospital. Have an isolation area for those people with minimal um, furnishings in it. Have an area outside that with BSI. Um, PPE area where they can dress up before they go into that section. Um, food and beverage area, area. Uh, so if you need something to eat or drink, you have that area. Um, having portable uh, water is going to be key. How about record keeping? Being able to track who came in the, to your medical area and what you treated them for so you can keep track of them. And people may say, why? Because maybe somebody's going to come looking for them. Is going to be key. Have when they first walk up, somebody do triage area outside of the tent, tent or your medical facility. 
Do they need to be inside? Can they wait a little bit? Um, is going to be key. How about a refugee area, family area? So if the family's bringing the person to your area, you have a place to put these people away from the medical tent, but a housing area, you know, somebody's yard, football field, baseball field. Um, because the patient will relax more knowing their family's around. The uh, family will relax more, more knowing that the patient's being cared for. Another thing people may, may forget is fire protection for your medical facility. If the power is out, are you going to have fire extinguishers? Are you going to have buckets of water? How are you going to put that fire out if something happens? Another one with the medical facility would be a mortuary or where you're going to put the dead bodies. With that, having somebody to pay, be your chaplain and offer uh, church uh, services for family. Is the area going to be safe for you and everybody else to be doing this? And where are you going to get your resources from? Are you going to have EMS providers? Maybe because the 911 system down, they're able to come over and help staff it. Regular medical people from in your community. Uh, firefighters. Uh, military. Um, people that worked in the nursing home. Whatever. But make sure that you have these people available for you to be able to do, to do stuff. That's part of what we need to do. Um, having, um, how do you make a, a medical facility, you know, have somebody start building saw horses or go out and buy saw horses, you know, so you can make homemade uh, stretchers, wood, wood, you know, or whatever you have available to make those. Have a security force. Because in case somebody tries to rush your area. And they're in charge of security for it. Have a communications plan. Uh, depending on how large the disaster is. It is like during Katrina. When we were deployed in Gustav. We had established uh, an air medical area. Uh, when we were at Gustav, we set up, and I forget the name of the town, uh, it was somewhere near where the ground zero was on the coast of New Orleans. We had to set up a um, medical facility in a school, um, and we were set up to be able to land um, two to four helicopters at a time if we needed Um the biggest issue with that school was the amount of moisture from the hurricane. So it really wasn't safe for the providers to be in there because the walls were sweating. That's how much moisture was in the school. Having a sleeping area for your, your providers is going to be key. And remember that that medical facility may serve a couple different tasks. You know, um, if it's not being used for medical, could you use it for a staging area for something else? So, um, and I've thought about this because do you have a way to move people? Are you going to carry them? Do you have a wagon? Do you have a horse and buggy that you can move people? That's going to be key of how you're going to move people. You know, during a tornado, using pickup trucks. You know, where you put people in the pickup truck and get somebody to drive them to the hospital. Um, if there is one. You know, that's going to be some of the things you're going to have to think about. These ideas are not um, mine totally. I've read articles from different people. But it triggered me to think about what to talk about today. So hopefully it gets you thinking outside the box a little bit, makes you think. Uh, but realize if you're going to build a medical shelter, 
uh, what do you need in there? And that's going to be crazy because some of the requirements um, for a medical facility to be able to treat 100 people for three days gets crazy on the amount of supplies you need for that medical facility. Powering off. So you're going to have to look at that. So that's it for now. I'll let you go. Thanks for listening. Rescue Boss, I'll be signing off. Have a great day.